Philippine Folk Tales, author Mabel Cook Cole, published 1916, publisher A.C. McClurg and Company, Chicago, USA. Chapter 4, The Story of Guy Guyelma, Who Lives Up Above. One day, while Apanatalu sat weaving a basket under his house, he began to feel very hungry and longed for something sweet to chew. Then he remembered that his field was still unplanted. He called to his wife, who was in the room above, and said, Come, Apanabolanean, let us go to the field and plant some sugar cane. So Apanabolanean came down out of the house with a bamboo tube, and while she went to the spring to fill it with water, Apanatalu made some cuttings, and they went together to the field, which was some distance from the house. Apanatalu loosened the earth with his long stick and set out the cuttings he had brought, while his wife sprinkled them with water from the bamboo tube. And when they had filled the field, they returned home, happy to think of the splendid cane they should have. After seven days, Apanatalu went back to the field to see if the plants had lived, and he found that the leaves were already long and pointed. This delighted him, and while he stood looking at it, he grew impatient and determined to use his magical power so that the cane would grow very fast. In five days, he again visited the field and found that the stalks were tall and ready to chew. He hurried home to tell Apanabolanean how fast their plants had grown, and she was proud of her powerful husband. Now, about this time, Gagayoma, who was the daughter of Bagbagak, a big star, and Sinag, the moon, looked down from her home in the sky, and when she saw the tall sugar cane growing below, she was seized with a desire to chew it. She called to her father, Bagbagak, and said, O oh, father, please send the stars down to the earth to get some of the sugar cane that I see, for I must have it to chew. So Bagbagak sent the stars down, and when they reached the bamboo fence that was around the field, they sprang over it, and each broke a stalk of the cane and pulled some beans which Apanabolanean had planted, and the stems of these beans were of gold. Gagayoma was delighted with the things that the stars brought her. She cooked the beans with the golden stems and spent long hours chewing the sweet cane. When all that the stars brought was gone, however, she grew restless and called to her father, the big star, Come, father, and go with me to the place where the sugar cane grows, for I want to see it now. Bagbagak called many stars to accompany him, and they all followed Gagayoma down to the place where the sugar cane grew. Some sat on the bamboo fence, while others went to the middle of the field, and all ate as much as they wished. The day following this, Apanatalu said to his wife, Apanabalean, I am going to the field to see if the bamboo fence is strong, for the carabao will try to get in to eat our sugar cane. So he set out, and when he reached the field and began looking along the fence to see if it was strong, he kept finding the stalks that the stars had chewed, and he knew that someone had been there. He went to the middle of the field, and there on the ground was a piece of gold, and he said to himself, How strange this is! I believe some beautiful girl must have chewed my cane. I will watch tonight, and maybe she will return for more. As darkness came on, he had no thought of returning home. But he made his meal of the sugar cane, and then hid in the tall grass near the field to wait. By and by, dazzling lights blinded his eyes, and when he could see again, he was startled to find many stars falling from the sky, and soon he heard someone breaking the cane. Suddenly, a star so large that it looked like a flame of fire fell into the field, and then a beautiful object near the fence took off her dress, which looked like a star, and she appeared like the half of the rainbow. Never had Apanatalu seen such sights, and for a while he lay shaking with fear. What shall I do, he said to himself. If I do not frighten these companions of the beautiful girl, they may eat me. With a great effort he jumped up and frightened the stars till they all flew up, and when the pretty girl came looking for her dress, she found Apanatalu sitting on it. 
You must forgive us, she said, for your sugar cane is very sweet, and we wanted some to chew. You are welcome to the sugar cane, answered Apanatalu, but now we must tell our names according to our customs, for it is bad for us to talk until we know each other's names. Then he gave her some betel nut, and they chewed together, and he said, Now it is our custom to tell our names. Yes, she said, but you tell first. My name is Apanatalu, and I am the husband of Apanabalanean. <coughs> I am Gaya Gayama, the daughter of Bagbagak and Sinag up in the air, said the girl. And now, Apanatalu, even though you have a wife, I am going to take you up to the sky, for I wish to marry you. If you are not willing to go, I shall call my companion stars to eat you. Apanatalu shook with fear, for he knew now that the woman was a spirit, and as he dared not refuse, he promised to go with her. Soon after that, the stars dropped a basket that Gayagayama had ordered them to make, and Apanatalu stepped in with the lovely star and was drawn quickly through the air up to the sky. They were met on their arrival by a giant star whom Gayagayama introduced as her father, and he told Apanatalu that he had acted wisely in coming, for had he objected, the other stars would have eaten him. After Apanatalu had lived with the stars for some time, Gayagayama asked him to prick between her last two fingers, and as he did so, a beautiful baby boy popped out. They named him Takyayan, and he grew very fast and was strong. All this time, Apanatalu had never forgotten Apanabalanean, who he knew was searching for him on the earth, but he had been afraid to mention her to the stars. When the boy was three months old, however, he ventured to tell Gaigayama of his wish to return to the earth. At first, she would not listen to him, but pleaded so hard that at last she consented to let him go for one moon. If he did not return at the end of that time, she said, she would send the stars to eat him. Then she called for the basket again, and they were lowered to the earth. There, Apanatolu got out, but Gaigayama and the baby returned to the sky. Apanabalanean was filled with joy at the sight of her husband once more, for she had believed him dead, and she was very thin from not eating while he was away. Never did she tire of listening to his stories of his life among the stars, and so happy was she to have him again that when the time came for him to leave, she refused to let him go. That night, many stars came to the house. Some stood in the windows while others stayed outside by the walls, and they were so bright that the house appeared to be on fire. Apanatalu was greatly frightened, and he cried out to his wife, You have done wrong to keep me when I should have gone. I feared that the stars would eat me if I did not obey their command, and now they have come. Hide me, or they will get me. <clears throat> but before Apanabalanean could answer, Bagbagak himself called out, Do not hide from us, Apanatalu, for we know that you are in the corner of the house. Come out, come out or we shall eat you. Trembling with fear, Apanatalu appeared, and when the stars asked him if he was willing to go with them, he dared not refuse. Now Gaigayama had grown very fond of Apanatalu, and she had commanded the stars not to harm him if he was willing to return to her. So when he gave his consent, they put him in the basket and flew away with him, leaving Apanabalanean very sad and lonely. After that, Apanatalu made many trips to the earth, but at Gaigayama's command, he always returned to the sky to spend part of the time with her. One day, when Takayayan was a little boy, Apanatalu took him down to the earth to see his half-brother, Kanag. The world was full of wonders to the boy from the sky, and he wanted to stay there always. But after some time, while he and Kanag were playing out in the yard, big drops of water began to fall on them. Kanag ran to his mother and cried, Oh, mother, it is raining, and the sun is shining brightly. But Apanatalu, look, looking out, said, No, they are the tears of Gaigayama, for she sees her son down below, and she weeps for him. Then he took Takyayan back to his mother in the sky, and she was happy again. 
After that, Takyayan was always glad when he was allowed to visit the earth, but each time when the mother's tears began to fall, he returned to her. When he was old enough, Apanatalu selected a wife for him, and after that, Takyayan always lived on the earth, but Gaikayama stayed in the sky. Wakas.